today I'm going to explain to you that we and our children have an opportunity, have a chance to survive this century. Let me ask you a, um, a question. Who of you owns a car? Okay. Did you know that the world has one billion cars today? Okay. And now imagine that you have your car and imagine that you would refuse to drive on a road where somebody else would have driven before. Think about that. That would require us to fill the whole world with asphalt. So we'd have a spaghetti of roads and the world would look like this. Another question. Who of you stays in hotels now and then? Okay, a lot of hands. Um, there are about three billion um, guest nights um, um, per year. And suppose every guest would ask the same thing. So not, it's staying in a hotel room where nobody stayed before. That would require three billion newly built hotels rooms per year to be rebuilt every year. So it would cover all space on Earth. Two absolute nightmares. So, how do we manage? Well, it's, it's quite simple. We don't mind sharing hotel rooms, seats, conference rooms like these, conference seats like these, beaches, parks, library books. And why? Because there's simply no other way. We just don't have sufficient room and space available. But strangely enough, we refuse to share uh, lots of other things, thousands and thousands of other things. Ladies and gentlemen, civilization has now come to a point, a dramatic turning point, where almost no natural resource is still available in unlimited quantities. We are quickly running out of our resources. We can ignore or deny it, but the signs are pretty clear. We got global warming, water conflicts, shortage of natural resources, new epidemics, patterns of new migration, and the list goes on. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to dramatically rethink the way we use resources and what we have produced for them. It's time to hit a sort of a world's reset button. Well, let me go a few years back. Um, a few years ago, I had a company, I was manufacturing equipment, construction equipment, like this. And these machines are to transport cables. Yeah, you see these three reels on it, these are to transport cables. And I sold these to construction companies. And what I noticed is that worldwide we had a market of 10 billion. But of that 10 billion, 50% was unused. So 50% of the, all the time for these machines was not used. So of all raw materials we spent, we took out of the earth to make this equipment, we wasted half. Gone. So it's basically rusting there, underutilized, gone. Later, a few months later, I realized that that same proved true for all heavy equipment. And think about excavators, tractors, um, machines builders use and agricultural companies, farmers use to, uh, to do their work. The value of that market worldwide, there's at this moment 6,000 billion value of machines standing on our earth. And the same is true for this material as well. 
So we are wasting here 50% of the material. It's underutilized, it's unused, standing idle. Early 2011, just over one year ago, I um, realized that it went even one step further because construction, you know, that 6,000 billion market was only one of 90 markets full of abundance. And think about office space, think about sea transport, think about trucks, railway, MRE scanners, cranes. So the abundance is not, was not only here, but it's everywhere around us. And if we have to put an amount behind that abundance, we were talking about trillions and trillions, trillions. So it's unused abundance. We already have created as human beings. It's there, not used. And I realized what would happen if we would make that visible, visible that abundance, and make sure that we would then trade it between each other and share it. Three things would happen. First of all, we would cut the waste and we would stop depleting our earth. Because why would we dig up so much raw material still if we already know that we only use half of what we have created? Secondly, we would end crisis simply because we have economically not used half of what we have already created. So it means new income for people, eh? utilizing that abundance, and it will also mean that we would cut our costs, because why would you buy for new material, new machines, new whatever, if you know that some 10 miles away, there's somebody else having that abundance available already? And the third one, is that it creates new opportunities for all, for everybody. So, and you know, people are talking about scarcity. And yes, we have scarcity in, te in terms of raw materials. But no, we don't have scarcity in terms of tools and machines and everything which I just showed. There's an abundance of possibilities. And if we can make it visible, we can use it. So, why was, wasn't this done earlier? Wasn't this um, developed earlier? Um, getting this done and in operation required two things. First of all, crisis. Um, crisis hurts. You know? It's hurting you and me, it's hurting our families, it's hurting our companies, it's hurting our societies. It's painful and we absolutely hate it. And that's why people are now aware and also willing to change, to accept the change. Change is difficult, but the alternative is worse. So people are willing now to change. And people don't have any faith anymore that the current systems will provide the solution, because they won't. And the second one, where crisis is a um, driver for this idea, technology is the enabler. Because today, internet technology facilitates almost 5 billion people in the world to connect. And that means that 5 billion people can share their abundance, what they've got, and share with others who are in a temporary need of it. And that 5 billion will further grow in the next coming years. It will basically connect every you and me on the planet. So we drown in abundance. And utilizing it would be clicking like the world's reset button. It would. Your and my golden opportunity to leave our world behind for our children in a better state than when we entered it. So, ladies and gentlemen, 
I suggest we push the button. Thank you.